Y'all follow that? Be instant in season and out of season. I can be in the grocery store and run into somebody who don't know Jesus Christ or run into somebody who need prayer. I've prayed for people on the street before. I've witnessed the people on the street before. Reprove, the Bible says. Rebuke them. Exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. We need to speak the truth. And wherever the world fall, whether you need to be rebuked, whether you need to be corrected, whether you need exhortation, we need to give it to them just as they need it. Some folks need to be rebuked. You know that, right? Yeah. You're doing the wrong thing, brother. You need to straighten out. You need to come on to Jesus. Correct them when they go in the wrong way, talking about Jesus don't exist. Nah, Jesus died. Yes. We needed a second Adam. Because in the beginning when Adam and Eve was created, the heavens and earth, all these things that God laid charge to Adam, and when his wife messed up by eating the fruit off the tree and gave it to her husband, sin was birthed. And because sin entered in, now we need a second Adam. To get the story straight. Y'all follow that? Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ is the second Adam. Yes. He came to reconcile man back to God. This gospel needs to be preached to every creature. And when every creature on this earth receives the gospel, then the Bible said Jesus coming back, y'all. You know that, right? Mm -hmm. The gospel must be preached about Jesus Christ. We must tell the truth to the world. We must be witnesses. The Holy Spirit helps us to become witnesses. I couldn't come up here and preach this gospel to you without the Holy Ghost. Natural, regular flesh can't do this. It's the Spirit of God that bears witness that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is the King of kings, the Lord of lords. He's Savior. It's the Holy Spirit that is the witness. He works the work in you and in me. Right in verse 3 it said, For the time will come. Are we in that right now time? Look at what the scripture said. For the time will come when they will not what? Endure sound doctrine. What are they doing? They're closing their ears to the truth. People don't want you to talk to them about Jesus Christ and sin and being saved. They love their sin more than they love God. Read Matthew 24. What's going to happen in the last days. Read Revelation. He said that they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap up in, look, to themselves. They inventing stuff, y'all. They coming up with their own, I'm a little God. You got people telling you that you a little God. The devil is a liar. Everything that the devil has ever spoken to you, and the Spirit of God gave me this word, anything that the devil has ever spoken to you was a lie. He was a liar from the beginning, and he lies to wound you and to bruise you. Listen to that message that I gave on Know Your Enemy. The devil is a real enemy to you. He's a friend to nobody. The Bible calls him a thief and a liar. And you know the Bible said he, he can't even get access to heaven no more. He don't have the access that we have. This is why he's working so hard to kill you, to destroy you, because that's his job. His, he's the accuser of the brethren. It's in the scripture. The devil is the accuser. Every time Steve do something, Steve at the job backing up God. You see how he acts? You ought to kill him. The devil talks against all of us. Did y'all know that? He He's a little tattletale. He gonna run to God. The Bible says that the devil is the accuser of the brethren. Can somebody find that scripture for me? Find that scripture. The accuser. He accuses you day and night. The Bible says he don't like you. Let me tell you the truth about him. The devil don't like you. He ain't your friend. Nope. If you read that Bible, you will know. And I want you to get that video I got that uh, know your enemy. You got to see it. Look what this says. But after their own lust, what's, what's it? Revelations 12 and 10. Revelations 12 and 10. He don't like you. And see, Revelations 12 is deep. 
See, I, I need to do another message on that one. Because Revelation said the devil come down with wrath. He's declared war on all God's people. He want to kill you for real. He can't stand you. If he rebelled and can't stand God, he can't stand you. We're all God's children. Revelation 12 and 10. Will you read that, Amber? Then I heard a loud voice in heaven say, Now have come the salvation and the power and the kingdom of our God and the authority of his Christ. For the accusers and our brothers who accused them before our God day and night has been heard down. Did you hear that? Wow. He said the accuser of our brethren day and night. Do he take a break from accusing you? He don't take a break. The devil don't like you. Don't ever think he do. Revelation 12 and 10 just told us what he do. If you ever read it, I'm going to read it again. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation through who? Through Jesus Christ and strength in the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ for the accuser of our brethren is what? He's cast down. He's a big loser. Which accused them before our God day and night. Boy, you need to get you a life. Get something to do. That devil don't like you. Everything he speaks is a lie. Everything that he speaks is a lie. Should Christians be in the world? Christians are being in the world, but the Bible says we're not of the world. Now let me break that down for you because that's a good question. See, Christians think that you can't dance, you can't do this, and you can't do that. Here's what I say. If the Holy Spirit is convicting you on anything, you stop doing it. If your conscience is hitting you about something, I'm going to tell the truth on myself. For example, me. I went to the store, me and Steve, and I played the lottery. <laughs> I was going to get the million millions. Nephew, I wanted to hit the lottery and become a millionaire. I'm speaking truth before God. And because I have the Holy Spirit, in the moment I was doing it, I'm kind of wrestling inside, but I'm like, okay, I'm trying to talk myself into it. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing. Just go and play that ticket. You know, you might hit that. And what if you hit the number and you become rich? Then people ain't going to be talking then. Because this is how the devil talked to you. He talked to me too. We're not above anything. The Bible said a servant is not above them. If the devil took Jesus in the wilderness, he'll tempt you too. So, of course, I played them numbers. <laughs> And when I played all them numbers, not one looked like anything in the lottery. And you know why? Because I knew better. And the Holy Spirit began to convict me on that. And saying that you know you ain't have no business playing no lottery. And he said, that's idolatry. Because now you're lusting after money. You're lusting to be rich. Now, don't get it twisted. While we're in this life, Paul said, what I really want to do, sometimes I don't do it. And what I don't want to do, sometimes that's what I do. So it's a wrestling in your flesh because we're part spirit and flesh. Sometimes you battle with stuff. But the important thing is that you come out of it. When I first got saved, I cussed like a sailor. I was in the first grade cussing. G-Mom was a, grand, a mother who cussed like a sailor. And she got some good cuss words when we was kids. And my little self could cuss too. I was. I was a good cusser. And I cussed this little girl out in school. She hit me in my face with that jump rope. And I called her a B word. And I got paddled. <laughs> Miss Wallace, I'll never forget that. Baby, when I tell you, Miss Wallace and that gym shoe. Oh, oh yeah. My butt was on fire when Miss Wallace hit me with that gym shoe on my butt. Do you think I ever cussed again? Not around the school, but I cussed outside the school. I still cussed you. I was a good little cussing child. I'm funny, it's funny, but I'm painting an example to you when I became a Christian. It was some Sundays that Steve, baby, I would cuss this man out right after church. I'm telling you the truth, I'm Deborah. 
Holy Ghost had to deal with me. While you're in this world, you will have troubles, the Bible said. There's some things you're going to wrestle with. Some of us have problems with smoking weed. Some of us got problems with drinking. We can't point a finger of fault at nobody. Because the Bible says all have sinned. I'm going in a different direction. But it's okay because you need to hear this truth if you ask the question. The Bible says all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, not a one. Not one of us are righteous. It takes time for us as believers to crawl. When you're a baby, you don't instantly crawl, do you? Mama got to carry you and take care of you. Then when you get a little bit older, you crawl, right? And as you crawl, you, you start getting up on your feet. It's a little wobbly, but you start... You know, you start uh, getting strength in your legs and you start catching your balance. Your equilibrium works out and then you about two, one and a half, two, you, you're walking good. We ain't going there. <laughs> I'm done with the sheep stuff. In Christianity, it's the same thing. When I first got saved, I was still that cussing mouth Christian carnal-minded Christian, misbehaving, naughty person, but I had Jesus Christ on the inside, and once the Holy Spirit came in me, I started learning. And now, I'm a Christian who's crawling. I'm crawling because I don't know everything about the Bible, so there's some things I'm still doing wrong, even though I'm a Christian. All of us don't mature at the same levels. All of us have a growth. We're a work in process, progress, but all of us don't grow at the same pace. You don't develop. Some of your friends got a beard before you got a beard in school, didn't they? Yeah? So there's a maturation. There's a level of maturity that some of us hit before other people hit in this gospel. It takes folk to stop cussing maybe 30, 40 years because it's just a habit that we have. And it's, look, Peter cussed, Jesus told him, before the cop calls three times, Peter, you won't cuss somebody out and you're going to deny me. And he did just that. Because God knows that we're flesh. Flesh, because you're living in this house of flesh, you still have mistakes and faults in you. But that doesn't mean that you're not saved. You can't save, I mean, can't go out in the world. Uh, I mean, Christian folks be out in the world, right? Go save other Christians. That can be on your job. Let me explain. I hear your question now. As you're living your life daily, as you are practicing righteousness as a Christian, it's not always that you're going to go door to door to everybody's house. Jesus does tell us, go out into the world, preach the gospel, how we do it through video. This gospel is going to YouTube. I put it on my Instagram. Somebody hearing this gospel aside from you. So we got different ways and mediums to get the gospel out now. So physically, we don't have to always go because of COVID and, and restrictions like that. Some things are hindering us to do certain things. That's not always a mandate. When I'm on my job, I talk to people about the Lord, and, and we have church at the job sometimes, basically, because I talk to this pastor. I talk to another Christian at the job. So we basically know that we're believers. We talk about Jesus Christ, but a lot of folks that I work with are Christians already. But there's opportunities sometimes when you at, maybe say, the movies, or you at the grocery store. And I will tell you, I strike up conversation with people. I talk to people in the grocery store sometimes. It ain't always about God, but people will recognize that you're a Christian. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that opens the dialogue. You just got to use wisdom. Because trust me, I've been out preaching to people, and they'll cuss you out. You start talking to them about the Lord. But don't get tangled up in that. Living your life the way you're supposed to live it eventually will draw people to you. They, they will come to you. And then there will be opportunities where you have one-on-ones where you're able to preach the gospel to people. So don't get caught up in that. You, well, Christians are supposed to do this and do that. Yeah, the Bible tells us certain things, but we got to use wisdom in it. I have opportunities where, yeah, on the job, you know, I'll pray for people. It's, it's certain people on the job that's watching you. Over time, eventually, you'll get a chance to sow that seed. They might know something we might know. 
Of course. Yeah. That's where the dialogue come up when you're talking. But you know the point part of that is that you want to get into a situation, you want to get into a matter where people see it on you. That's the most important. I, I think we part. all understand you know, that. Once you get to a point where people see it on you, where you ain't got to say nothing, that's when you know where you at. You really know where you at. And Your that, life is a demonstration. And, and, and that would bring that would bring some matter to your life, and also that will correct you from doing too much of wrong because you think about what who's someone, watching. You. Who's watching you. Let's wrap this message up because we're gonna get tangled up out here. I want to wrap this thing up because we don't usually open the floor like this, talking in the midst of the message. Okay. So I want to wrap this message up. The point of the message is that we are to preach the gospel to every creature. When the opportunity presents itself, you preach. Yeah. But because of COVID-19, everybody ain't going to everybody's door. And trust me, people ain't letting you in their house. You ain't coming up in folks' house with COVID. So verse 4 says, listen to this. They, and they will turn away. Not only, wait a minute, let me go to 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heed to themselves, teachers having itching ears. They're looking for a different truth because they want to resist the truth of God. Verse 4 says, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. I know this to be true because a young lady that I went to church with in California when I was in the Navy, she stopped believing in the return, the rapture. She don't believe in the rapture anymore. She's turned to some type of different gospel. And when I tell you she used to be gung-ho for Jesus Christ, somewhere it was a shift and a pivoting in her life. But that's how slick the devil is. When the devil comes to speak lies to your ear, lies are meant to wound you and hurt you. They're not meant to help you. And when the devil can turn your heart from God, think about how people are committing suicide. Suicide rate, they're taking fentanyl. We live in a society where people are codependent on something. And the reason why they're codependent, they're drinking, marijuana stores popping up everywhere. There's certain things you're codependent to because there's a lot of wounded people. And you really need God in your life to help make you whole. When you get into a place, the word of God has healing power in it. The more you sit up under teaching and the more you sit up under the word of God, the better you will get. The more improved your mental health will get. Your thought process is going to get clarity. You're going to get, have you got some real clarity since you've been getting taught the word, Amber? You feel like you've grown? Mm -hmm. I believe that. I said to Amber, out of the children that we have in this house, adult children, you're going to be the strength in the family. I know Alexander say he read his Bible, he said to Jesus Christ as his personal Lord and Savior. What about, what about nuclear experiments? Those are worldly things that, you know something, let's say this. There's a lot of experimenting going on now. There's a lot of things that should not be taking place. But here's what you got to see. Jesus Christ came and he finished the work. He died on the cross and he rose again. Now it's up to us to help as many people as we can to get into the family of God. The nuclear weapons, nobody can make a move without God's approval. The earth won't be destroyed until God gives the word to destroy the earth. Because their Bible said that this, the earth is going to be uh, it's going to be destroyed by fire. Remember the flood? Noah, the ark? The next time something major and destructive, I believe nuclear warheads is going to be the thing. I don't know that for a fact, but the earth, the Bible says, is going to be destroyed by fire. So those nuclear weapons are in ready mode. And trust me, when the end comes, those who of us who are believers in Jesus Christ, the Bible said we're going to be raptured up. We ain't going to be here. So the other folks that don't know Jesus, they got to go through the trials, and they got to go through those tests. That's why you got the plants and the, you know, the nuclear plants and the stuff that go around in the plants. Man-made stuff. Yeah. Here's what you got to understand about that. Because there's a creator, man creates things. 
it's because of God's intelligence that he puts in man. So you know all those things exist because God gave man the ability to do it. But your main focus is on your spiritual side of you. The spiritual side. When well, we're preaching about Jesus Christ, you got good questions. You're a thinker, and I like that. But you got to know. That's something I learned. I had to learn that the hard way. And it's okay. Mm -hmm. You're a military guy. Mm -hmm. And those things, you've been exposed to a whole lot of stuff in the military. Mm -hmm. whole lot of teaching. Don't get mad at him, Merlin. He's in an informal setting, kind of. You got questions, and it's okay. Question. It's okay. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Let me wrap this message up. This is what the Bible is instructing us to do. I see her reaction. I see, I see everything. But watch thou in all things. This is what the Bible tells us. Watch. You watch. Listen to the, what the Bible said. You watch in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. Don't stop preaching about Jesus Christ. Don't stop telling people about him. For verse 6, Paul said, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight and I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness. This is to every believer that does what God tells them to do. You have a ministry. Which is the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day and not to me only, but unto all of them also that love his appearing. We need Jesus Christ. Yes. I want you to get the anointing oil. We're going to pray on Javon. Pray on, get some anointing oil. We're going to pray on you. I pray something was said to encourage you. If you don't know Jesus Christ, get to know him. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart God raised from the dead. The Bible said you'll be saved. Amen.